Hey everyone, Sky here to discuss A Beautiful Mind, starring Russell Crowe, Ed Harris, Jennifer Connelly, Paul Bettany, and Christopher Plummer, and directed by Ron Howard. Now, I remember this movie coming out in theaters, and I did see it in theaters a long time ago, though, and did it deserve the best picture? What else was nominated that year? I remember The Fellowship of the Ring was nominated that year. I can't remember what else off the top of my head, but... Did it deserve the best picture of the year back in 2001? Well, that's what I'm here to discuss with you. Let's get into it. In September 1947, at Princeton University, a mathematician named John Nash, played by Russell Crowe, is a genius with math and his vision of how his math works as he starts school with his roommate Charles, played by Paul Bettany, who is recently in that TV show WandaVision, which I've been watching on Disney+, and begins to do math on his window, and he doesn't like people much, and people don't like him, and Russell Crowe is uh, very good in this role of John Nash. Hell, even better in the role of Maximus in Gladiator. I know some people will disagree with me on this at this point, but I'll get to Gladiator when I can, and I say this because the character is like nothing, is not like anything you see Russell Crowe playing doing anymore, because come on, how many times have you seen Russell Crowe as a tough guy? Or challenging himself to a role like this? Just give me the answer down there in the comments, please. Because there's a good chance that you see Russell Crowe as a tough guy too many movies. John goes to a bar and chats with the girl by starting... Or staring at her, excuse me. And bringing up the sex and gets slapped about it. Which is something you should not bring up in general when you first meet someone. But, these beginning scenes do kind of slow the movie down, as this is a long, little bit of a long movie at 2 hours and 16 minutes. But we do learn a little bit about John Nash as an autistic person, as he overreacts by hitting himself on the window. And I do like how we know about John Nash as a man before he wins the Nobel Prize as a mathematician. Because the, the man we learn throughout the movie is a genius of math, but has issues of his own, as does everyone else. But yeah, the first 25 minutes of this movie does slow the movie down. But I do like the score in this movie. It sounds pretty good. Five years later, John gets a job as a doctor in the Pentagon for a brief moment or two. And as he imagines the numbers lighting up in his mind, as he gets a map of he to discover his math genius is, as he saves the world, and he goes to the defense labs and meets his colleagues as his teachers, uh, as he teaches, excuse me, a calculus class. Where he meets Alicia, played by Jennifer Connelly, who does some great work as she'll eventually, in the movie, be his wife. As she convinces some, const some construction workers to work someplace else for 45 minutes as it's hot with the windows closed and noisy with them open. And this is the role that Jennifer Connelly got the best, what was it, supporting actress nomin? I mean, winning for the role of this character, Alicia Nash. So I'm, I'm proud of her that she got the Oscar, honestly. John meets William Parcher, played by Ed Harris, as he takes John underground to become the best natural code breaker, gets a coat of, on his arm, and Alicia goes to John's office because she solved the John's problem, sort of. And Alicia asks John to dinner, and they have such get great chemistry as they begin to date as he gets her a drink and meets her outside, and they count the stars with shapes, which is the best scene in the movie, in my opinion. John uses letters to light up in his imagination as he brings a classified letter to Parcher, and I do like the character of Alicia, and Jennifer Connelly, again, does some great work in here. John gets a visit by Charles and his sister's daughter, and they catch up, and Charles advises John to marry the girl of his dreams, and the next thing you know, he meets Alicia at a restaurant, and he prepares to her, he proposes to her, excuse me, and they get married and sees Parcher at his wedding, and the next thing you know, John and Parcher get shot at and lose the shooters at the bay, which was rather an intense scene. 
John gets home and locks himself in the room as the next scene, you know, he's teaching author calculus, or another calculus, as he's abandoned it. Parcher comes to John, to John to talk with him in his office as we hear Alicia is pregnant, where we learn Parcher is in his imagination, and we learn John is insane in that scene when his colleagues asks if he's all right. John struggles in a presentation as he thinks he's being chased by some men in black and meets Dr. Rosen, who's a psychiatrist and played by Christopher Plummer, as John punches him in the face and brings him to his office while chained up at a psychiatric hospital. As we learn, Charles and the little girl are also in John's imagine, imagination, like Parcher. Alicia is very worried about John as he locked, he's locked up in a mental hospital, and she goes in his office to find the pictures of some Russian spies, and she learns about John's imagination. And it is good filmmaking as the movie is a well-made movie, but did it deserve the best picture of the year in 2001? I'm going to be honest. No, not really. Because it deals with autism well. It's a little, but it's a little heavy for a best picture winner as far as I'm concerned. John is sort of cured in living with Alicia and their baby and gets a visitor from one of his colleagues as he's depressed out of his mind as he can't put a pacifier in his baby's mouth and later on he leaves the baby in a bathtub alone and because of his condition he can't take care of a baby as the movie gets pretty damn heavy despite the PG-13 rating. Alicia takes the baby to her mother's place and we learn John hasn't been taking the medicine for a while and he hears a kid throwing a rock at the, his window as it turns out. It's Parcher as he wants John to get back to work and calls him a soldier which is rather odd because he didn't call him that before. Alicia learns his imagination isn't normal at all and calls Dr. Rosen and Parcher almost kills her and John pushes her, pushes Alicia I mean, and almost runs out as he says the little girl isn't real because she doesn't grow old and they get Dr. Rosen to the house and she says John needs to get back to a mental hospital as John doesn't want to go back and tries to ignore the imaginary people, which unfortunately isn't the way it works in life, but he works on it at best. Two months later, John goes b back to Pitts Princeton University to talk to one of his old colleagues, Martin Hansen, who's played by Josh Lucas, about getting a job at the university and sees Parcher terrorizing him. And he tries again the next day and says to Charles and the little girl that he'll never talk to them again, including Parcher, and he cures himself by ignoring them and works on math as well as around the university. As he's getting older and we move on to 1978, where he meets a student named Toby as well as other students as Alicia and Martin witnesses it and John wants a teaching position. And we move on to him as a teacher in the university, at the university in 1994, and is told he's up for the Nobel Prize, and talks with the man with the Nobel Prize as he admits he's crazy, and is awarded with multiple pens, and as we saw in the beginning of the movie with a different guy, and he wins the Nobel Prize at the ceremony in Switzerland. And he continues to ignore Charles, the little girl, and Parcher. And it is a good ending to learn that John ignored them for the rest of his life. And I do like the ending as it is a... But is it Best Picture? No. Because this is a heavy movie for a PG-13 rating, in my opinion. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 7.6 out of 10. The, I do like the performances by the actors, and the score is really good, as the movie is well made. But does it deserve the best picture of the year 2001? No, but it is a good film. It's not one I would own on Blu-ray, but if it weren't for next week's movie, we'll see how that movie goes. I do, and this is a heavy movie, as I do like the movie, and because it, 
It is a Best Picture winner at the Oscars in 2001. I recommend you see it, but give it till like the age of 14 or 15 to watch this because a 13-year-old will be bored out of their minds. But it is a good film, and I do say go check this out, but the 13 year old's going to definitely be bored. I remember being bored, and I was like, what? I forget. But So I would like to thank you guys for joining me, and next time I will be back with Cinderella Man. And until next time, it's time to win the Oscar again, Russell.